There was a comment that, you know, somebody didn't like me reading out Malachi 2 today, but I really felt that, that was the scriptural passage that our Lord was was putting in my heart today, calling out the, the shepherds to shepherd, to shepherd. If you this is what our Lord left, formed his disciples to, to go out and to shepherd and to transform. Um, because his message is not the message of this world. Our Lord said to me once that there is no soul that he can't make a saint. No soul. Everybody is called to that encounter of love with Christ. And who knows, in 20, 30, 40, 100 years, Pope Francis could be Pope Saint Francis I. Very possible. Our Lord can do anything. He did it with Saint Peter. He could do it with Pope Francis. And that's the reality. The uh, same with Cardinal Fernandez. There is no cardinal, no pope, no bishop, no priest, no layperson, no woman, no man, nobody that God can't make a saint. But her Lord is very insistent. My gospel, my way is not of this world. And the church has one mission that no other institution in this world can do. The UN can't do it. Uh, the Red Cross can't do it. Uh, the Climate Change Action can't do this. Uh, the EU can't do it. America can't do it. China, communism can't do it. No other institution, nothing, no other institution in this world can give souls sanctifying grace, can bring souls to heaven. You know, our Lord left his church his disciples, these mysteries, these tools, these powerful tools that uh, open our relationship with Christ. They really do. I mean, I've seen miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. I, if, if I'd ever have been a priest, I don't think I would have seen so many miracles that I've seen since I started blogging. Because you do something innocently and then you see lives transformed. And I'm saying, well, I didn't. I, I, I did something very innocent. I just did, say, a walk the cross with Anto or very innocent. Nothing spectacular. Really, just very innocent stuff. And you see cascading down lives changed. But lives completely changed. Sometimes I ask our Lord, what's going on here, Lord? All of these people around me are having their, their lives completely changed. And I'm stuck <laughs> with the with the job and with the kids and the this and this. I'm not getting all these gifts you're giving to all these other people. But, you know, our Lord does what he does. You read the gospel. Well, they're my gifts and I give them to whoever and I say, bless you, Lord. Uh, so, you know... It's incredible. You see these great conversions, these these great miracles around you. You said, wow, this is really amazing. And you're kind of in the midst of this. But it doesn't happen in my family <laughs> yet. It's just, I'm just relating what happens. You know, in my family, they, oh, they're, they're caught up in the materialism and the, the phones and the teenage stuff and this and the other. I, I, I wish I wish we'd have some uh, some supernatural something happening here, but it doesn't it doesn't happen to me. But it seems to be happening all around me for some reason. People, you know, I do a video and and, and the miracles that I see happening, real miracles real real miracles because this is what our lord does he he transforms lives he transforms lives and our lord left us a way a way to him he taught us he taught his disciples the way and he didn't do it to make them confused he didn't have 12 confused disciples teaching the way of course you had the power of the holy spirit helping them along the way you know to go out to baptize to spread the message but never in the life of the church have the disciples been confused on marriage you know the world is confused i know the church has accepted the world is confused and we have a pope saying well the previous pope would have approved of my vision of protecting these couples we have to protect them we have to bless them and, you know, you have a whole world pushing this already. 
and you have no where is the church on this no we give in it's not marriage it's not marriage to be clear we're not changing marriage but we're also not calling you to conversion we're not calling you to the christian way of perfection you know poor you you can't do any better than the way you're living your life and who are we to judge you you know we have to teach the faith we have to teach the faith or who will teach it? You know, Catholicism is... Uh, as, and, and this is why people need to understand why there's such an attack on Catholicism being the largest Christian denomination. Why has the attack has always been on the papacy on getting a person like Pope Francis where he is? What has been the... It is to destroy the faith. You know, it is to destroy the faith. We have seen 50 years of destruction of the Eucharist. We give it out in the hand like a like a cookie. People haven't a clue about sanctifying grace. They haven't a clue about the Christian way of perfection. Because we don't teach it. We don't teach it in seminaries. We don't teach it in seminaries. And that, you know, we saw Pope Benedict's final book, uh, What is Christianity? And he's talking about uh, you, what was going on in German seminaries. You know, they were showing seminarians porn. And you wonder why the, the German synodal vague process is in process. You know, sin, S-I-N way, the sin way process, the synodal way. That's what it is. That's what this, this process is in Germany that's been unleashed onto the church. And to, to top it off with confusion, look here, you have a document now. So no, to appease you, look, you can't do it as a, you can't have it in churches, you can't do it this, but like, like, Catholics are are awake. Yes, holy, if, if, if this has happened 50 years ago, do you know what, maybe Catholics would be, oh, the Pope, the Pope has said this, we have to respect the Pope, we have to respect, but we've seen time and time capitulation, 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 capitulation. It's the early church used to receive communion on the hand. So we have to go back to that. And do you know why? Because, uh, you know, for, for God knows last millennium, we've been doing crazy things. Now back to communion on the hand and back to this. Get rid of altars, get rid of vestments, get rid of, get rid of reverence, get rid of your seminaries, get rid of your congregations, <laughs> you know. And people haven't a clue. And then you have this, I see in Ireland a lot, I don't know if it's in other places, you have this Catholic superstition. <laughs> you know, this superstition. Because people are religious. They, they need God. They need, they love for God. And people, you know, people will go into churches and light a candle and, and won't genuflect in front of the Eucharist. Because they don't know. They don't know. We haven't taught them. We haven't taught them. When the Pope released his document and all of the world's media, all of the world's media, it was like a coordinated response, came out with the same headlines. All of the world's media. They weren't confused. They read the document. And tomorrow you can expect more confusion from the Vatican. Because every single thing that's happened in this papacy has brought confusion on top of confusion. You know, you know, one step forward, two steps back. This is the reality. But like God's mercy is great and he can change anyone. He can, you know. There are things of conversions and maybe the Pope will come to his senses and start preaching the apostolic faith that the apostles preached. If it was good enough for our Lord Jesus Christ and good enough for his apostles to preach that faith, why isn't it good enough for us to do it today? Or are we afraid? Are we afraid we won't have a seat at the UN? Are we afraid we won't have a seat at all the, the, the World Economic Forum? Are we afraid that we'll have pickets at the Vatican? Are we afraid? We're so afraid of the world. I, like we're the only institution that can open you to 
to, to, to have free, to have your to, to heaven we're the only institute that is the only mission that, that the church has and the world won't understand this the world thinks well Robert Nugent you're absolutely crazy bonkers talking about salvation of your soul heaven doesn't exist where are you off to you're off with the fairies over there in Ireland you're cuckoo Robert this is what they'll say you know it's true of course people have no clue but I'm nice I'm nice. I, everybody goes to heaven these days, Robert. Every funeral we go to in Ireland, and we're all off to heaven. Everybody's good. Nobody killed anybody. There's no SS guards here. Why are you worried? And why are you even worried about this? You seem obsessed with it, Robert. You know, the comments that come at you. Well, like... And then... At the same time, the church is grappling, well, why don't we have any seminarians? Why don't, why are our religious communities collapsing across Ireland? Because this is where we're, we're going. In, 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 I did the statistics. Going the way we're going, we would be lucky to have 300 nuns in 30 years' time left in Ireland, in the whole island. And male monastic communities, you might, you would struggle to have three, four of them, if there, there are even any. You know, I did a video there on Tony Flannery, the Redemptorists, unless they bring in external vocations, they will struggle like other communities around, around Ireland will struggle. Because simply what happens is if you don't love our Lord and you put our Lord centre, he'll say, that's OK. I respect your decisions, guys. I respect you, Tony Flannery and Redemptorists. I respect you. But my spirit will depart from you. And it does. He steps back. His spirit departs. It's the truth. Because you don't put him centre. Are we bringing souls to Christ? Or are we bringing them to the world, to ourselves? To our own invention of the faith? The modern theologians I am reading, you know. We've so intellectualised our, the, the, our modern understanding of faith that Christ has completely disappeared from the scene you know Christ is the same yesterday as today his message is the same yesterday as today and our shepherds are off bowing down to the world Satan always needs some form of worship just give me a little bit of that worship that you're going to give to Christ tiny bit tiny bit who is delighted about this confusion that we have fostered in the church since since for the last number of years the pachamama the bishop saying i never baptized anyone uh you know the this confusion of since who is delighted it's red legs below he is absolutely guys finally you've got with the times good guys of course Look, it's only a simple blessing. It's only a little blessing. And most of you guys, you won't even have to do it. It's just a few of you. It's just that Jesuit off there in New York. He's, it's just a blessing. It's just, I'll find them on the street and it doesn't matter when they're holding hands. It's just a blessing, guys. And you know, it's not like Satan ever wanted affirmation. Of course he wanted affirmation. Satan has always looked for affirmation. Because he craves to be adored. He craves that off us. Just give me a little bit of what you give to, the, to God. Just a little bit. You can actually, re if you actually go to Maria Valtorta's writings and you read The Temptation in the Desert, it is a masterpiece on how Satan works. It is really a masterpiece. If we only meditated on, because, you know, Satan enters uh, where, where Christ is during the 40 days. Satan enters and he starts off. Oh, you're thirsty. You're thirsty. God, if you just come with me, I'll bring you down. Uh, there's a place here we can get something to drink. And Christ is silent. You're hungry. But you can turn this these stones into bread. Aren't you hungry? Just have a little bit of it. He's silent. Uh, you need a wife. You need a woman. You need a woman. And he goes through this power. Power. 
You know, Satan tempts us at every step of the way. If he can't do it this way, if he can't, he'll, he'll do anything to draw us away from Christ. If we, if somebody actually educates us on this, you can actually see his strategy. He'll, he'll get us at some way to draw us away from Christ. Even the most holiest people in there, in, in the priests, he'll make you so active you won't pray. Or he'll do something. It's, it's, he's a master of deception. And he's into the church now. And he says, well, look, guys, you know, I, I have a pope. You can't imagine it, guys. Satan is down in hell and he's saying, you wouldn't believe what the pope has just said. Guys, this is unprecedented in papal history. He's gone on national Italian TV and he says his personal opinion. He thinks hell is empty. It's a masterpiece. That's what Satan is saying. A man, he's delighted. It's the Pope doing his work for him. Because he's certainly not putting the fear of God or the fear of Satan into people. No. Nobody gets, I mean, an empty hell that we're all off their universal salvation. Is this where we've headed? You know, empty hell, we might as well just get, you know, get rid of Satan. He doesn't exist. <laughs> Who is Satan anyway? Do you, do you understand? Do, do people, am I painting a picture that you can relate to here in the church? You know, look at what Satan does. He needs, he, you know, he needs a little bit of us to be attached to him. In our, because in doing so, he stops us having union with God. And the masters, the spiritual masters, they talk about this extensively. Teresa Vabla, John of the Cross. You know, it's, it's, it's the spiritual battle. It's the, it's the way of perfection. It's understanding, okay, well, where is he working in my life? What is he attaching himself to? You know, it could be, it could, you know, Satan Satan could attach himself to a rosary, to a, a, a relic, a cross. He can attach, say if I had a, a, if you were religious, for example, and you made a vow of prophecy, but I'm really attached to this cross because it was my great grandmother's and, it means so much to me. And instead of adoring Christ, we, we're adoring this physical object. We're attached to it and we can't let it go. Or, do you know what I mean? Because Satan will use something good to attach, our, to attach our, 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 ourselves to. That's, he's, he's a master. You know, and if you read Maria Valtorta, she is, she is describing it so well in that temptation. And it's into the church. And I'm surprised bishops, cardinals and priests, you're not you're not seeing the obvious before your eyes. This confusion doesn't come from God. This confusion doesn't come from God. Christ will be clear. You know, he you know let, let, let me bury the dead first and let the dead bury the dead. You know, Christ was uh, <laughs> you know, he he calls us to 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 leave behind and to follow him. Do you know? It, it, the more meditation you can, the more you can see the infiltration into the church, and it's very, very clear, and it's very, very obvious. You know, we've given up the spiritual fight. We've given up the way of perfection in the church. Completely, you know. Let, let's, you know what? We've given it up, and you know it's a. Uh, if it, it, we've, we've it's the culmination of modernism over the last number of years to such an extent that you know people are just people are just saying, well, what's going on here i think i think even the orthodox and the cops and the eastern churches were saying well you know rome is capitulated rome is capitulated on some very very basic things we've you've you've affirmed the world Ah, yeah, yeah, you're not into the, the whole thing yet, the whole, the whole woke agenda. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. Two or three pontificates down the line. You know, the, for, the, the frog will be boiled in the church enough. The church will accept it. Baby steps. It's like the destruction of faith in the Eucharist. It didn't start overnight. Look, 
It's just on the hand. The early church used to give it on the hand. Let's get rid of, rid of altar rails. Let's get rid of silence. Let's get rid of contemplation. You know, it's amazing the work that Satan has done in removing contemplation in the Mass. It is the, it is the work that Satan has done removing contemplation in the Mass. You know, the, the Mass is a mirror of our spiritual life. It just kind of condensed but it's actually a mirror. It's actually the, the our path of sanctification. So if you go to Holy Mass, it actually is your your it actually mirrors your path of sanctification. You you're confessing your sins, so it's purification, um, contemplation in 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 the Word of God, uh, and union with God. You know, it's 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 the ma the seven mansions of Saint Teresa of Avila are all in the in the Holy Mass from end to end and so what does satan do because he wants to destroy the seven mansions saint Teresa's seven mansions in the church this is his whole plan is to be destroyed is to destroy the way of perfection it's a master please a master plan i am the satan's plan destroy the way of perfection so what what does he do in the mass stops contemplation stops union be, stops confession so no sanctifying grace, you know, our contemplation. Well, if you if you were to survey people after a Sunday mass coming out. 80 percent of them probably wouldn't even know what readings we had at mass. Most of the time, those people reading at mass. Don't know how to proclaim the word of God. You know, Lexio Divina is in Taj, you know, even though we have a beautiful expanded lectionary in the church. We have less people going to Mass than before Vatican II. In the West, in Ireland, across Europe, across North America, across Latin America, we have less people. And that's, you know, you have growth in Africa, which is <laughs> one of the places that has vocally, vocally resisted what is going on in Rome and in Asia. But do you understand, you know, what, what has been the, the attack is on the mass. The attack is to stop purification, stop contemplation, stop union. And so the mass becomes an empty shell. It's meaningless to people because I'm not encountering Christ. You know, and yes, if we understood the way of perfection, if we actually had spiritual masters in our church that knew spiritual warfare correctly, that were able to teach us spiritual warfare, and actually teach us the way of perfection, which is what was done for 2000 years. You know, it's 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 masters that taught our disciples the way you see it in Mount Athos. Among the monks. You see it and uh, you see it in some places in the church that will actually teach you the way of perfection. But in our church today, we have lost that we're, we're sending men into seminaries that shouldn't be going into seminaries you know if it was up to me i wouldn't send a single man into a, <laughs> to do a pro protutic year i put them three years in a monastery and have them washing dishes and attending to pilgrims or attending to people coming and changing beds and cleaning houses you'll be more a saint there and you'll have more preparation there doing the little things with great love than in a in a classroom in a seminary it's the truth but once you have union with god then study theology, study philosophy. But we're putting the cart before the horse and putting people through an academic system. No union with God. I mean, like very, very little. It's only by the grace of God you have some great seminaries around the world, some great communities. But like this is where we've landed, guys. This is where we've landed in the church. And so, you know, God's grace is, is great, but... I give this message with love. <laughs> Those in Rome are not teaching us. They're not fostering union with God. They're not, they're not wise enough to see the wisdom of spiritual masters for 2,000 years. And they're landing us with junk theology. And you need to know this. Because I will speak with authority in saying, I'm, I'm not speaking on my own behalf. I'm speaking after reading all of these spiritual masters, all of these saints, which God has put in our life. 2,000 years of, of patrimony, of wealth in the church that, the, that, that is 
ah, sidelined. Oh no, the world can't understand. That's too high. Teresa of Avila, the world would not understand her. They would un they probably wouldn't, but they would un they would they would understand the witness of somebody that understands her. If we were actually saints, if we actually had union with God, people would see in us something credible that would drive them to know more, to, 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 to actually go more. You know, they would see and also credible if we had more saints in the church. And that the reality is in uh, with the current leadership in Rome with Pope Francis and the Cardinal McElroy's and Kupic and McCarrick's and uh, Fernandez and his, his, his appointments, his Cardinal Roaches, they're not credible spiritual witnesses of the faith. We don't see in you men of God with union with God. Because if you did, you wouldn't turn around to Latin mass communities and say, no, we need to get rid of that mass. You would probably foster it. You would, you know, strengthen it in the sense, well, OK, well, what what good is here that can come out of this? Is there something good for the church? Or it, you know, it can be negative, there can be negative positive, but to foster that, and it's not happening. And we see it through the synodal process. We see it, it's junk theology. It will not bring us to any closer union with God. It simply won't. You know, releasing a document, Fiducia Supplicants, that doesn't have a single scriptural reference, goes to show you that the, the document has no, no legs to stand on whatsoever. It's confusion on top of confusion. And no wonder Cardinal Ladaria silently steps back and won't get involved in the synodal process. He was invited by Pope Francis along with Cardinal Muller to this synodal process. He wouldn't, be, he wouldn't go. It says a lot when the fired car, uh, previous prefect of the Doctrine of the Faith Ignores the Pope invitation and will not go, would not go to the junk theology session, which is the synodal process. In my estimation. And so, guys, you need to know this. Catholics need to, you need to wake up, especially the laity need to wake up and you need to question those that are leading you. Where are you leading us to? More confusion, more confusion, more confusion. What happened to the way of perfection in the church? What happened to knowing what is sin and knowing what is not sin? Especially when you're young. Why are so many failed marriages? Why are so many people? Because they haven't been taught the faith. We haven't been taught. Our schools are, are, are empty shells. Catholic schools are empty shells. And there's no faith formation. And at the very top, we have a Pope that is forming fake disciples like James Martin, appointed to his dicastery of communication or whatever department of communication in the Vatican. A fake disciple leading people in error. And, you know, the world applauds. Get your ticket to the White House here. To the to the to the man that 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 campaigns for the destruction of the child in the womb, campaigns for abortion, funds abortion, and what does the church do? We give you communion, Joe Biden and James Martin, you because you're you're on the way to perf to the perfection in hell, and nobody will call you out. Nobody will call you. It's it's absolutely bonkers, crazy what is going on in the church. You know, if Padre Pio was alive today, I wonder what he would say. <laughs> to see his 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 tomb covered around with Rupnik art. <laughs> do you know, guys? Just you have to wake up in the church, and I say this message with love. We need church unity. I'm I'm reinforcing the unity. Say the unity prayer. Pray for the Pope. Uh, and pray for everybody <laughs> that's that's involved in this and god can make saints out of any of them you know in decades to come you could have saint francis the, saint pope francis the first of course you could 
Christ can make a saint out of everyone. If he can make it out of St. Peter, he can make it out of Pope Francis. But the error is error is there. The error in the church is there. You're not leading us on the path of sanctification. You're not preaching it. You know, if the Pope spent more time on this than pandering to the EU and the WF and the climate this and the because we hear that all the time in the media. Oh the constant where the, the constant this, the constant the church is one mission. Get back to doing the mission of the church which is salvation of souls. You know if you had people on fire for the Lord, you wouldn't have so many of the world problems. You know, if you if you transform a person to be like Christ, you transform communities, you transform the world. But when you, the, what the Pope wants, you won't be able to do it without Christ, without union with God, and that that process requires leadership. It really does. Anyway, pray for the Pope, and and, and I give it in a good spirit. No, I'm not coming here with a spirit of Protestantism. I'm not I'm not don't hate anybody, and I certainly don't want disunity in the church. But I would I would challenge any priest, bishop, cardinal, anybody in the church to come back and say how I'm wrong. You cannot invent a new way of perfection in the church. The way of perfection that the that Christ passed to his apostles and has been passed is what it is. You recognize what is sin and you embark on the on the path of sanctification. And you don't pander between the two of them. You know, because the only institution that will call that is able to that that has its mission to call us out of our sin is the church. And the church isn't doing that. The church isn't doing it. You know, we need to be forming spiritual masters for this millennium. What's coming? You know, I don't know what's coming this week. I have this this terrible feeling of, of, of some disaster happening this week, an earthquake in Mexico, an eight an eight point something magnitude earthquake happening somewhere. Maybe it's in the back of my mind, but um, you know, Let's pray that it's not coming. No, I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm just talking about later on in the week. I don't know what's coming to be in my mind. Yeah. Anyway, pray for the church. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.